Hey folks, how's it going? This is Dominic here from everyone. Welcome to this edition of the Fish of the Week. This week we're going to take a look at a phishing campaign that's been hitting our customers. It's not actually a new phishing campaign, uh, but uh, it, somehow there was a little spike this week and uh, it's been hitting our, our customers. And uh, these customers are protected with all kinds of technologies and uh, unfortunately, you know, they're still kind of passing through. Um, so this one is actually a PDF based uh, campaign. Uh, we, have a, we have a little sample here. This is one where it pretends to be a statement or a bill from AT&T. Uh, when you look at the email itself, uh, you know, it's trying to, you know, obviously uh, spoof the sender by saying it's AT&T. Uh, the email itself is fairly simple and uh, the email contains a PDF uh, that is rendered typically in line uh, by most email clients here. So uh, here, when you do read the message, you know, it looks pretty normal. You know, there's a few typos in here. The attackers are not very good at cleaning that up. Uh, but the thing that it that can that will you know create an emotional response for the users receiving those is that the bill here you know is almost nine hundred dollars right so um, you know if I'm expecting to be paying about a hundred dollars for my bills uh, you know this seems pretty high so if we compare that to an actual AT and T you know email you know you'll notice they're actually very different uh, but again you know the attackers are trying to just get you to click on things so let's take a look at this PDF here so if we just uh, focus on the PDF itself. Right, so again, very simple here, image, text, and a link. The link pretends to be from AT&T, uh, but if you were to hover on it or actually see where it's trying to take you, it's actually taking you to a compromised WordPress site here. So if we do pull down uh, the payload behind that link, we see that it's a zip file, and then the zip file, uh, if we extract its content, is actually just a JavaScript file in there. So if we double click on that JavaScript file, what we find is that it's a highly obfuscated file. Um, you know, generally speaking, that's not good news. It's usually you know some piece of malware. Um, I don't think any any good developers would actually uh, obfuscate their code like that. But uh, but if we take a little look here, you know, just purely looking at the stuff that is readable, uh, you know, we can see that uh, you know it doesn't quite look right. And then if we pull the payloads behind the links that we see, uh, you know, in the top part of that code here. Uh, they actually do pull down some Windows executable, uh, which typically you would not really expect uh, a regular file, a regular you know JavaScript file to do. But here, obviously, it is a malicious one, and that's what it does. It's actually pulling uh, you know malicious content. So we did run a little analysis on this JavaScript file and the files that it's pulling down. Uh, so what do we find, like I said, the executable that that gets pulled down uh, eventually shows up after a few redirection. Uh, and when we do run this executable in a VM or a sandbox, what we find is that uh, you know it's redirecting us to adult websites. So this behavior is very typical from the uh, Imatet Trojan. Um, and uh, you know, if you want to know a little bit more about that, you know, feel free to follow this Wikipedia link here. Uh, I'll give you a bit more color on how this uh, malware works. So how does this work, right? So here, uh, you know, the attacker is trying to impersonate a brand, uh, you know, that you know they would expect you to have, you know, for your cell phone or your services. Uh, you know, the email is using compromised websites to host the payloads, and then um, those URLs uh, in those documents are not exactly where they're supposed to go. So again, trying to masquerade uh, everything about the email to make it less, less suspicious. And also from a email authentication perspective, uh, you know, some of these emails are sent from compromised account or uh, trusted infrastructure. And again, anything that has to do with SPF, TKM, DMARC, uh, doesn't do a really good job at detecting those. Um, so why does it work here? Like I said, you know, beyond the ability to just get into your inbox because of authentication, uh, like I said earlier, if you look at the cell phone bill, you know, it's $900. Like I said, if you're expecting a $100 bill, you know, obviously that is very uh, uh, problematic, right? So, so trying to get the victim to click, open the document, click and see what's going on. And, you know, if you, ha you happen to do that, then you will eventually get to, to download that malware and then you'll be compromised. So not a good outcome. So how do we stop these things, right? So one, uh, from a technology perspective at Area 1, uh, our active sensors have the ability to detect these campaigns, understand uh, what these attackers are doing, how are they modifying their campaigns, um, such that we can take that information and, and protect our customers against these type of phishing campaigns. Also from a, a more advanced scanning technology or detection technology here, uh, like I said, we detect beyond email authentication. Uh, but also, we have technology that allows us to do brand impersonation detection, right? So things like computer vision, things like being able to recognize uh, what's in those emails to say, hey, is this really an AT&T email in this case? And also, from a URL analysis perspective, uh, we will track those, those URLs. We'll follow them if we don't have advanced knowledge of, the, of what they are. 
Uh, so our, our high-speed crawler can actually uh, crawl those in real time, and then we can render the verdict or you know, what kind of thread is sitting behind that URL. So these are all things that you know, are extremely important, especially as those attacks continue to morph uh, or you know, more and more different uh, pieces of infrastructure gets compromised. So you have to be able to be able to, to scan these and react very quickly to these campaigns. So if you have any questions on uh, today's presentation, uh, please feel free to reach us. You can reach us at aerionsecurity.com or you can send us an email at demo at Thank you and hope this was useful. Have a good day.